So, could I see by a show of hands who has been to the Toronto International Film Festival? One, one, two, great. So I think the two of you have probably seen uh, what we have to offer our sponsors. Um, our sponsorship revenue is the single biggest stream of revenue at TIFF. Uh, it's three times our government grants. It's also three times our philanthropic donations. And it's a little bit bigger than our ticketing revenue year round. So that's a lot of money that my team needs to raise. Uh, our team raises about 14 million in sponsorship revenue, which is, by my calculations, about the biggest any film festival has to raise in, in uh, partnerships. Uh, and because of this, we have to have a really robust sponsorship program. Uh, so today I'm hoping to share with you what I've learned in the 10 years at TIFF, and I'm also hoping to learn a, learn a bit from you. So if you have questions throughout the presentation, please feel free to ask. Uh, otherwise, we'll have lots of time at the end for questions. So if we look at today's agenda, let me just see if I can figure this out. Here we go. Um, first, we're going to talk about selling corporate partnerships. Um, and the first piece of this is getting to know your festival and what's unique about it. We're also going to do a few exercises uh, to build your prospect list. Uh, and we'll also talk about the pitch, which might be scary, but I think you can do it. I'll also talk about servicing partners. So once you have someone on board, it's really, really important that you give them a lot of attention and love so that they feel as passionate about your festival as you do. Uh, and also you need to prove that return on investment for them. So we'll be talking about that as well as other ways to stay in touch. So. Oh, sorry, and then we'll take a look at the sponsorship landscape and some trends I've seen in the industry, as well as a few case studies. So before you meet with a prospective sponsor, you really need to understand what makes your festival unique and what you have to offer a prospective sponsor. I've got some examples after this slide, but to summarize, you need to know what is your festival doing that makes you bold? Are you showing growth? Who are your attendees? Do you know who comes to your festival? What's your digital strategy? This is really important, in, especially in 2016 and moving forward. You need to know what your competitive advantage is over the next local event. And you also know, need to know what's your impact and how will that affect a sponsor? So let's talk about that in detail. I've taken the slides from our TIFF deck, just to show you an example of how we show our, our um, prospects, uh, what makes us unique. The first thing is about being bold. You need to show that you're dynamic and doing really bold and exciting things. So for example, if you have something new and exciting that's happening about your festival, talk about this. Tell your sponsors all about it. So for us, we started uh, Festival Street, which is an outdoor, free to the public, portion of our festival, which takes over a whole city, or probably four city blocks. Uh, and there's, there's uh, free films, free music, and lots of sponsor activations that happen on the street. So this is how we show that we're bold. The next piece is knowing who your attendees are. This is really important, um, because you need to, to talk. And, and from this, you'll, you'll uh, sorry, we'll, you'll talk about growth as well. So, uh, from, for TIFF, we talk about who our public attendees are and how this is growing, as well as looking at the films that we have and where they're coming from. We also take a look at our volunteer program uh, and the number of industry delegates we have. And we show how this is growing every year, because a lot of sponsors will want to hitch their, star their wagons to rising stars and grow with your festival. So now we'll talk about attendees. This is really important to know uh, the makeup of your festival demographic. So things like, what's the, what's the education of your festival attendees? Sponsors are going to want to know that. What kind of income do your festival attendees uh, have? Where do they live? Sponsors will need to know if they can tap into local budgets, national budgets, or international budgets. What's the age group of your attendees? And are your attendees male or female? 
So once you know this information, and hopefully you're able to survey your, your uh, attendees to get this information, you'll need to really tailor your audience to your prospective sponsor. So let's look at a sponsor like a makeup sponsor. Uh, we have L'Oreal Paris, for example. We know that L'Oreal Paris is looking to target females 25 to 45 who may have a slightly higher uh, than average income. So we're gonna show them this and how our attendee base really matches who they're looking for. So the next example is about that digital strategy I spoke about. If you don't already have a, a great digital strategy and are on all the social platforms, you should be. The digital, digital engagement and content is the number one area for new marketing investment. So make sure you're in there with your sponsors. Sponsors are gonna wanna be able to talk to your attendees on your platforms, and they're also gonna wanna be able to share your content and what's happening at your festival and uh, on their own platforms. This should always be part of a partnership. And the next piece is about competitive advantage. As a festival, you need to really play up what you've got. Are you the biggest or the newest festival on the block? What's your competitive advantage here? At TIFF, uh, we do talk about attendance, and that's certainly one of our uh, competitive advantages. But we also talk about uh, the number of film nominations our films get uh, for the North American Film Awards. And we compare ourselves to other festivals because we find that when sponsors are coming to TIFF, they're also looking at other festivals. All right, so now we know what makes you unique, and we've talked a bit about that. Now you need to build a prospect list. So the first way, uh, sorry, we're gonna shift gears with that prospect lift to Formula One. Talking about mostly festivals here, this is an exercise where we can use uh, car racing. Um, so when we first look to build a prospect list, most people just look at the brands that they think are a really good fit with your category. So if we look at Formula One, can I get some ideas from the audience of brands or categories that you think would be a good fit to sponsor the Formula One? Tires, yeah, that's a good one. Red Bull, Red Bull yeah, for sure. Technology. Technology, sorry, what was that one in the back? The, the Intel. Intel, yeah. Anything else? Right, okay, I think I got a few of those. So for me, when I think about nat Formula One, a natural fit is the booze, champagne, wine, spirits, and beer. I'll think about oil and gas. I'll think about hardware, I'll think about energy drinks like Red Bull, and I might think about automotive and automotive parts. So that's a really easy way to start your prospect list, and those will probably be the first type of the first sponsors that you'll target. And that's the way most properties do it. Now let's dig a little bit deeper with another exercise with Formula One again and do a word association. So now if we think about Formula One. What kind of words would we associate with car racing uh, or any way we would describe it? Can I get examples from the audience? Of how you might, champions, yeah, good one. Quality, Quality? yeah. Speed. Speed, yeah, fast. Anything else? Fine. Dangerous, yeah. <laughs> okay, great, so I, I got a few of those here. So fast. So now, if I think about fast, I might think about companies that are an internet company or a shipping company or, or electronics. So all of these types of companies are, you would probably associate with fast. If I think about dangerous, I might think about condoms or security. <laughs> think about uh, hot is one that I came up with in order to combat that heat. I might think about fragrance, deodorant, or laundry detergent. So these are some like outside the box categories that you might not naturally associate with your fest or with Formula One, um, but I think are good to add. And a few more here. Loud. Why not go after a headphone champion, a headphone sponsor if you're a Formula One? And then trust is another one, and safety. So looking at insurance or financial institution. So I took a look at Formula One sponsors, and they hit almost all of these categories uh, from this exercise and the past one. So I think it's important to look past the obvious brands that could connect with their festival, and why not extend uh, your prospect list a little bit further? 
So now I have a festival example. And one more way that we can think about our prospects are by our audience. So in looking at what makes your festival unique, you did uh, some research on who your audience is, and you probably come up with a few audience segments. At TIFF, we are uh, a big uh, mass public festival, but we also cater to the industry side. So we've come up with four separate audience groups who come to our festival. The first is the corporate influencer. Uh, this is somebody who wants reserved seats, they want VIP experiences, and they want to see their name in lights at the festival. So brands that we've connected with uh, that audience group are brands like our, our banks, like HSBC, uh, or SAP, the, the German software company. We also have uh, a big number of industry delegates, and these are people who look at TIFF to know what's new and hot. So we've partnered sponsors like Dolby Digital uh, and Dropbox, who want access to filmmakers with these industry insiders. We also have a huge number of red carpet consumers. So these are people clamoring around our red carpets. They probably don't even buy a ticket to our festival, but they're huge value to our sponsors. Uh, and th these people are also sharing a lot on social networks. So we've connected sponsors who are looking for people like this. L'Oreal Paris and Visa are good examples. And then finally, we cater to the cultural, culture aficionado. These are the, the cinema files at your festival. And these are people who are looking for uh, a bigger experience than just seeing a film. They probably also want to see a question and answer after the film, potentially meet with a filmmaker, something special about their festival experience. And brands that we've connected with this group are Samsung and Jaeger Le Coutre, excuse my pronunciation, uh, the luxury watch brand. So that was three ways to look at your prospect list. And now hopefully you have a sponsor in the door. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on bringing a sponsor in the door, but I will mention that one email or one phone call to a, a prospect is not enough. We found that it takes up to five different outreaches to a prospect in order to get somebody in the door or to accept a no that they don't wanna talk to us. So use that as your measure. Um, but the pitch. As a reminder, you're not only competing with f other film festivals for dollars, you're also likely competing against local music festivals, sporting events, it's a big one, uh, and other cultural events. So you need to make the most of your pitch. So how do you differentiate yourself from other properties? The first thing you need to do is research your partner's business. You need to know that prospect inside and out. What campaigns are they working on? What's new and exciting? Uh, and you also need to speak their language. And I mean speaking in the kind of lingo that they use on their website. So do a lot of research and know how, what they might want to focus on. You also want to meet in person with the decision maker. Meeting in person is key. Uh, it's very difficult to get a, a partnership done over the phone or over email. Uh, putting a face to a name is what you definitely want to be doing. Uh, and you also want to meet with the decision maker. So that's the person who holds the sponsorship budget. Um, if you're not meeting with that person, uh, you're, this, the budget maker is likely going to be hearing it secondhand and it will not have the same impact. You also want to customize each partnership based on the prospect's objectives. So in the first point, you've done all your research on the prospect. Now you need to build a deck for them or a proposal for them that is really customized to their business. Never send out a templated deck that you would send to all the sponsors. You also, within this deck, should throw in a couple creative ideas. So if you want to pitch them an activation on site at your festival, Make it interesting. Think about how they would connect with consumers using their business objectives. They may not love your idea, they may not use your idea, but they'll really appreciate the effort that you put behind it. And finally, you need to ensure the partnership adds value to both parties and is authentic and integrated into your festival. Your festival goers are really smart. They don't want to be sold something by a sponsor. And that's not what a sponsor is looking for either. 
They're looking to, to provide something that uh, adds an extra experience to the festival going experience. So now I'll share some examples of how we do it at TIFF. So in the top left, we took a prospect like Moet. So we knew Moet did a bottle signing at uh, a lot of the award ceremonies that they're sponsors of. So we looked to duplicate that at our festival. So at the very end of our biggest red carpet, we set up the Moet bottle. We had the celebrity sign it, and then we had a photo taken of the celebrity uh, signing the bottle, which Moet could then add to their website and their social platforms. Uh, on the right there, we took a brand like Canada Goose, who makes uh, really warm winter jackets. Prob most of you have probably heard of them. Um, they wanted uh, to celebrate that they are Canadian, but they also wanted access to tastemakers. So we created a sponsorship of a Canada party for them, where all the hot new Canadian talent would be. Then in the middle there, we had a sponsor, Express, who is a, a, a clothing company. They were looking for digital touch points. They were also looking for a charity angle, and they, uh, and they wanted to do something with celebrity, of course. Uh, so we created this uh, celebrity selfie photo booth for them, where in the green room, the celebrities would take a selfie of themselves. One dollar per photo was donated to TIFF's charity, which was also great for TIFF. Uh, and then Express was able to post this on all their social platforms, uh, and this campaign did quite well for them. Uh, and then on the right there, the bottom right, uh, we had a brand, uh, we had Samsung come in who wanted original content. Um, they weren't necessarily looking for celebrity, so what we created for them was interviews with uh, Cameron Bailey, our festival director, and he talked about some of his memorable moments at our festivals and at other festivals that he'd been to, which were posted on TIFF's website and the Samsung website. And then finally, uh, on-site integration has been key for a lot of our sponsors, so whenever we put together something, uh, whenever we put together a pitch for uh, any sponsor where you might want to touch and feel their product, we come up with a really cool idea that includes on-site integration. So since we're all festivals and we're trying to celebrate the, the moving image, why not put together a video that shows all of the ways that you can customize a partnership for your prospects? I'll show you what TIFF does here. Welcome to opening night of the 40th Toronto International Film Festival. We love you. We love you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Salma Hayek. I love the festival and I love the films that uh, don't make I don't make the usual circuit. Got here around seven. About eight thirty. The whole experience, like all the celebrities just waiting here, all the crazy people, it's just been so much fun. Well, good evening and welcome to Midnight Matters 2015! I think there's a few people up there. Uh, if you have a chance, move over on that side, because that's my best side. So I love showing that to uh, our prospects, especially if they haven't been to the festival, because it feels really impactful and exciting. So now we'll move to account management. You've brought a sponsor on board, uh, but now you really need to keep them year after year. So did you know that 
we may only bring in one in every 10 prospects we speak to. So that's a really hard work. But once we have a sponsor on board, there's an 80% chance that we'll be able to keep them on board if they've really enjoyed their festival campaign. So much easier to keep someone on board than to continuously, continuously have to find new sponsors year after year. So the first key to successful account management would be being an expert, knowing your sponsor's business. So when you were prospecting, you would have already done a lot of research on your sponsor, and this needs to continue. You need to know their business inside and out. You need to know uh, what brands they have, what markets they're in. Uh, I would suggest um, subscribing to any sort of Google alerts on, this, on all of your sponsors so you're in the know about them. You also need to communicate regularly and connect on a personal level. Now I know we all communicate with our partners to let them know about deadlines and events that we might want to bring them to, but you really need to add an extra layer to this. You need to take them out for coffees or lunches uh, and get to know them beyond just what they owe you for sponsorship or what you owe them. Make them feel like family. This makes it easy for your your partner to be as passionate about your festival as you are. The next point is about flexibility. So sponsors are going to be resistant if you try to stick to the contract exa exactly. So you want to try to be flexible when you can, when it will bring both, uh, when it will bring added value to your festival uh, and to the sponsor. But then I think you really need to be firm at times. Giving flexibility will allow you to be firm when you feel like your sponsors are asking for too much. And they will. They will definitely ask you for too much. Uh, and I'd like to call this benefit creep. Um, so if you can, try to offer a swap for something else in the contract if they're asking for more, or offer uh, additional benefits at an incremental fee. The next piece is about championing your brand within your organization. Make sure you use their products, drink their products, eat their products, and you want the rest of your festival uh, organization to be doing the same. So if you have a partnership with Samsung, make sure anyone who's public facing, including your programmers, all are using Samsung. As much as they love their iPhone, they have to be using Samsung, because we and your sponsors are going to notice this. Uh, and then finally, give your sponsors the tools that they need to succeed. Make sure they do have those deadlines. Make sure they know about anything coming up because it will just make their job easier. You need to show that you're a part of their team. Okay, so we have happy sponsors. Um, but a happy sponsor does not mean that they're going to renew after year after year. Even a passionate sponsor isn't going to renew after year, year after year. They have to be, you have to be able to show return on their investment. So this is key. So during your festival or immediately after, make sure you're surveying your attendees and your sponsors to find out what their, fe their festival experience was in relation to your sponsors. You also need to gather stats across all of your properties that are sponsored. So this would be digital stats, print stats, the number of films, uh, the number of attendees. Gather all that information together and put it in a summary report. So this is something that you can meet in person with your sponsors after the festival and walk through them, what exactly happened at the festival. And you should include some pretty pictures of what your sponsors did in this report. Um, and this will help show them the return on their investment and help them feel like their festival was a huge success. And this, of course, will help, it will make it much easier to renew them year after year. So staying in touch. For most of us, festival uh, is around, uh, it's a few weeks a year. There's a lot of communication in the lead up to the festival uh, and during the festival, but then there's silence. So I encourage you to find some touch points throughout the year to get in, to work with your sponsors. So one of the things that we do at TIFF uh, are networking events. These are pretty successful. We hold them about six months before the festival. We get together all of our sponsors for a cocktail party. We might bring in a speaker, but most of the event is used for the sponsors to talk with one another, to learn what, they're do what each, each other is doing, and find ways to work, to work together during the festival. 
We dig a bit deeper and we also have partner symposiums. So this is where we get about eight of our key sponsors together about nine or 10 months before the festival. This is an all day brainstorming work session where they can uh, come up with ideas to add value to the festival or to work together. And we found that these are quite successful and uh, some great ideas have come out of these symposiums as well. New this year, we also send out quarterly newsletters. So ours is called the Storyboard. I think you could do the same. Feel free to copy ours if you want. It's on our website. Uh, we share industry trends, what's exciting, uh, in sponsorship. Uh, we also share what's new at the festival so that we can keep our sponsors informed all year round. And then we also share with them any new properties that we might be selling or something that they might be interested in so that this is an opportunity to upsell your sponsors as well. I also encourage you to look into having some family events, especially if your festival has any sort of children's component. Um, during during uh, your festival, you're probably inviting your contacts out or executive out from the sponsors, but usually their kids or their spouses are not involved. So why not show a, f show a family friendly film to bring the whole family out? Uh, and then next, uh, I imagine a lot of you do these festival kickoff meetings. These are important uh, to get your sponsor all set for the festival and understand the deadlines that are, uh, are gonna be coming up and to start planning. And then we spoke in the last slide about having those in-person post-mortem meetings. This is a really good opportunity for you to listen to the sponsor's challenges that they might have had, as well as any successes. And this will help you a lot in the renewal or potentially an upsell the following year. So now we'll take a look at trends. We'll go back here. So I'm gonna share five trends that I've found uh, have created some really successful partnerships in the past few years. Um, these aren't necessarily groundbreaking, but I've found that if you can include at least one of these or potentially all of these in a partnership, uh, it, will, it will do really well and provide a really great return on investment for your partner. So the first one is uh, creating an interactive experience. Sponsors are looking for festival goers to touch and feel your brand uh, and really interact with the sponsor. Uh, so this is going to be key to your partnership. Uh, we've, I've also noticed an ongoing trend within this of sponsors wanting to include a virtual reality experience within their activation. Um, I think this is an interesting way to include this new emerging technology and create this really interesting immersive experience for your festival goers. So uh, if that's something that makes sense for you to include, I think that your sponsors will be wowed by it. Uh, the next piece is socially shareable. I've mentioned before that social should always be part of the idea. Uh, it's not as easy as just putting out a photo with your festival hashtag uh, and the sponsor's hashtag. You should really be creating some kind of cool experience that the, your festival goers want to share, they want to like, they want to follow, um, and that will help extend that festival experience beyond on site where you might have uh, where, with, where you have your current attendance, and it will expand it, expand, expand it potentially to the world. Um, content. We found that our sponsors are hungry for content. Um, this could be potentially unique content that you've created, that you or that you can create with your sponsor around what they're doing in the lead up to the festival, or what you're doing in the lead up to your festival. This could be content from red carpets, question and answers, uh, any access to filmmakers you might have. Uh, we've also found that unique access is really important. So this could be as simple as providing reserved seats for your sponsors, or it could be something like red carpet access for their media, uh, or for fans or VIPs. Uh, but basically it should be something that only a sponsor can get and that the general public can't access. And the last trend should always be part of the idea, if you can, is product trial. Again, getting your festival goers to touch and feel the product uh, and to, and hopefully eventually buy the product so that you're making money for your sponsor as well. So I wanna share a video with you again from one of our sponsors who I think did 
all of these trends really well. Um, this is from Ford, our automotive sponsor. Welcome to the final day here at the Toronto International Film Festival and what an adventure it has been. Ford has been the proud automotive partner for the festival, bringing you as close as possible to the action, from star moments to fan favorites and everything TIFF in between. Here's a look back. What would you like to say to the people as we wrap this festival up? Thank you for everything and for, most of all for sharing the love of cinema which we have. The fact that film festivals still exist in the way they do is a modern miracle and it's the most important thing to allow new voices. Have fun and, and have a laugh. That's the best thing that you can do at a festival, I think. I hope it makes your day because I have two tickets for you. Thanks for this awesome drive, this awesome car. Thanks for being environmentally friendly. That's important to all of us. Ford, I love you, Ford. and we're ending with a laugh with Mr. Wright. We hope you've enjoyed riding along with Ford as we've celebrated 40 years of film, but none of this would be possible without you, the fans. So thank you all very much. And as they say, that's a wrap. For Ford, I'm Nicole Jones. See you all next year. Great. So that video makes me feel good because it shows, you know, what a great experience Ford had at our festival. Um, if we look at some of the trends that were touched on in the video and what Ford did, the first one was that interactive experience. So Ford parked a shiny red Mustang right in the center of the festival village, and they created this cool virtual reality experience for our festival goers where they could get into the Mustang, uh, they could put on the Oculus virtual reality headset, uh, and it would show a scene where they were actually on a film set. And then around the Ford were uh, people pretending to be crew from the film. After the experience, the festival goer was sent a video of the whole experience. The next thing they did was the Who's in the Ford contest. So this is a Twitter contest to guess the next celebrity that would be coming out of a Ford. Uh, they had huge results with this. Um, and another great piece of this was that people were also posting photos of the celebrity that came out of the Ford, and then they could win tickets if they guessed correctly. Uh, the next piece was that unique access. So, as you saw from the video, we gave Nicole Jones, who was a reporter that Ford hired, uh, to get interviews with celebrities on our biggest red carpets. Uh, and this was a huge success for Ford because they were able to, to loop that in with some other content from the festival and post it on all their, on all their social platforms. We also gave Ford uh, an opportunity to get some additional content. Ford actually built this gigantic tower at our biggest red carpet and it had two camera operators on the top. They were getting a bird's eye view of the red carpets and everybody arriving in the Fords. So this provided some additional content to share with our, the festival goers in those videos that you saw uh, from Nicole Jones. Uh, another side benefit of this was that huge branding that they got. Um, all of the photographers were on the other side of the carpet, the professional photographers. Uh, so in almost every shot of a celebrity, you would see this Ford branding. So that was huge for Ford. 
and product trial. Product trial is a little bit more challenging with a, a vehicle, um, but we were able to do it. Uh, of course, uh, the talent and the directors all arrived in the Ford on the red carpet, um, but they also created something for the public, which was a shuttle program. So outside of all of the major venues, uh, if you had a festival ticket, you could find a Ford hybrid vehicle and get a ride to your next movie premiere uh, or your hotel. And of course, there'd be someone in there driving you who would be telling you a bit more about the hybrid and what Ford was doing at the festival. So Ford had some great results from this campaign. The campaign increased their engagement across all of their social platforms, which was great for Ford because as a car company, they do have a lot of love on their social platforms, but they also get a lot of complaints. So this certainly helped in this aspect. Um, and then they also had great live engagement as well. So they told us after the festival that they exceeded all of their objectives uh, with the virtual reality experience, as well as with that catch a Ford shuttle activation. So they were quite pleased with what they did at the festival. Oh, and there's Naomi with the big Ford sign in the back. Can't avoid it. So now we'll take a look at a beer partner. So Grolsch has been the official beer of TIFF since 2012. And uh, their whole platform for their partnerships is around film. So I suggest you speak with them if you haven't, if they're in your market. Um, they've been uh, currently, they're currently the sponsor of the Grolsch People's Choice Award, which is our audience, our, our audience award. Grolsch used their activation budget in a really smart way. Uh, as sponsor of the award, they branded all of the ballot boxes that you would see as you exit the theater, and you could put your ticket in to vote. They also had a festival trailer that had every eyeball on it who went to our, uh, our screenings. They also did a great festival lineup engagement. Now, in Canada, we can't serve alcohol in the lines because there's all these rules around serving alcohol in public. Um, but they were able to come up with a creative idea where they had actors who engaged and entertained the lineups while they were waiting for the film. And they also had some buttons that were commissioned by local artists that encouraged people to vote. Grolsch also had great on-site brand presence. So we had Grolsch work with all of our hospitality partners uh, to add branding to the bars and restaurants and hotels. And they also branded these eco cabs, which are bicycles, which essentially shuttled people around town for free. They also had great consumer activations. Uh, Grolsch had a branded bar at all of our festival events. And they also created something called the Grolsch Open House in partnership with the festival. So at the festival, there's lots of events, but they're usually, uh, you usually need an invite to them or you need to be a VIP. They wanted to sort of break those barriers and create something that was totally free, that everybody could come to, enjoy a Grolsch, and listen to some of their favorite bands. So this was hugely popular and had lineups all the time. They also created special edition packaging that had the TIFF brand on it, uh, and they also had the Grolsch People's Choice Award branding on it, and that was across Canada, so that was a big uh, boon for TIFF. Uh, and then their festival advertising was really targeted. Grolsch was everywhere in the downtown core, uh, and it really felt like they owned the festival, which was awesome for them. Uh, as you can see, like most of these uh, examples from Ford and Grolsch don't involve a logo on a printed material. Just as a note, we can't just offer a logo anymore. I like to say that the logo is dead. Your sponsorship platforms really need to be much more than that. And if you can, include those trends that we spoke about, that interac interactive experience, the product trial, the something, providing something socially shareable, unique access, and additional content. Uh, I'll just speak to that Grolsch and what their results were. They had, those, they had some great online results. They had great media reach with their campaign. But something that excited us the most uh, was that in 2013, Grolsch exceeded 10 million liters in Canada for the first time ever, which made Canada the largest export market for Grolsch in the world. So that really, for us, proved that there was huge return on their investment with TIFF. 
Now let's summarize what makes a successful partnership. And after this, we'll get to the questions. So we spoke about understanding what your unique offering is as a festival. Know what your competitive advantage is, know who your attendees are, and know how you're making an impact. We also talked about building that targeted prospect list. Look beyond just the brands that would be an obvious fit for your festival and try to think, think about uh, that word association exercise or who would be a fit with your audience members. We also talked about creativity and that's an essential tool to building out a partnership and creating something custom for every sponsor so that they can feel really special uh, at your festival. We also want to find sponsors with complementary goals to our festival. The best brand partnerships fulfill a need for both parties and have an authentic point of connection that's believable and adds value for your festival attendees. Delivering excellent service that definitely can't be forgotten. You need to stay in, your touch, stay in touch with your sponsors year round and really prove that they're getting return on their investment with your festival. There we are. So as I mentioned, your sponsor can't be just as passionate about your festival as you are. They also need to see that this is a good investment for them. And this will give you the opportunity as well to potentially upsell them and make sure they return as a partner. So now we're coming to the end of the presentation. I hope you've learned something from this. Uh, and I'd love to hear if you have any questions for me.